Hi everyone, welcome back to our special week-long segment of A Video Every Day, uh, talking about our Atlantic crossing. And yeah. um, Today we're going to be going over storm avoidance and weather routing. So this is mostly in Herbie's book because I, uh, I relied on him a lot for this one because he did so much research beforehand about like how to read clouds and weather formations that are coming and um, how to understand our weather routing systems that we have here on the boat. So I'm going to let him take it away for this one okay. because I can't say very much. <laughs> So with weather routing, it's really important to know how to read the clouds because that'll tell you what your local weather is and it's what you're actually having. So we had a big issue with forecasts. So when we started, we were recording or receiving weather faxes and we had people on shore telling us, you know, head here, head there because weather routing software was saying this is the direction to go. The issue we had is those all rely on the forecast actually being correct, which we found most of the time was very inaccurate. It was very frustrating. Yeah. So in the beginning, like when we left the Bahamas and we're heading towards Bermuda, we'd get the weather facts every afternoon and on and on. We it, stopped. It didn't have yeah. any impact on our journey. It, it was totally pointless. It was just like listening to the weather on your local channel. It's yeah. They like, say it's going to rain and it doesn't. Yeah. Later, when we'd given up on weather facts and we were just going by the clouds, we had friends on shore that were telling us weather routing information, which... We used it when there was no wind because they were saying wind is here. So we'd start heading in that direction. But if we had good wind, we sailed to the wind that we currently had. We buddy boated actually from Bermuda to the Azores with a couple on a catamaran. And they were awesome. And they had... Pretty intense weather routing software. Yeah, they had predict wind. Yeah. And they, would, they were able to download them to the boat. And we'd give them our position and they'd calculate theirs as well and there was one time that really stuck with me because we were both kind of close and the weather said that they should head about 120 miles north to get good wind because where we were was going to go be calmed and up there they were going to have 20 knots of wind so herbie looked at the clouds yeah i looked at the clouds and i'm looking at it like no like mm -hmm. the the pressures are changing and we're actually where we should be so they headed north and then we had 20 knots of wind and they were becalmed and motored for the next three days so that's a thing so honestly like really study to understand the cloud formations and what that means and what the winds are going to be because that is your biggest help and then another thing is spotting squalls and knowing which way they rotate if it's a high pressure low pressure gales all, all these things just understand them because then when you're out there and you watch these things develop around you you know what's going on it's not just puffy white clouds that are pretty or scary things that might bring wind like you actually know what you're in and the beauty of being out in the ocean is there's nothing obstructing the horizon so you can actually see clouds that are hundreds and hundreds of miles away like we actually saw hurricane chris and we we're about 400 and some miles from its center so we could see it and because i understand you know what the clouds look like and hurricanes actually produce their own wave pattern so being able to recognize that in the ocean i was able to confirm yep that's a hurricane avoid it <laughs> and this is this video is um an experiential video it's about our experience if yeah. you want information um specifically about what herbie's talking about like more educational uh, we do talk about that in some of our previous videos that yeah. we can actually link to down below. And also, he's written some really wonderful blog posts on it. So if yeah, you want to learn clouds. more about reading clouds and hurricane avoidance and stuff like that, please do check those out. Yeah. So that was how we did our weather routing, is I just look at the sky. And that and a barometer, because the barometer will tell you what your pressure is, and you know that the clouds that are coming are obviously going to be different from what you're currently in. Uh, so it was pretty much a lot of self-understanding of the weather around us that we did for our weather routing. Research. Yeah, a lot yeah. of research and a lot of study. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm one of those people that'll read a book and then do something and and know how to do and it. And know how to do it. His so, brain is crazy. So that works for me. Uh, <laughs> it might not work for you. You might need classes or something like that. They do offer really good weather courses uh, with the Power Squadron. And that might be an option for you. Or you could take some meteorology classes at your local 
college. Different I'm one options. of those people that needs to experience it and be in it in order to understand it. And therefore, Herbie taught me a lot while we were just on the ocean. He'd say, oh, look at that cloud formation. Guess what that means? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that really helped me. But that's not a great way to learn your first time for your first time yeah. if if, so, if neither of you knows what's going on <laughs> another really nice thing uh clouds will tell you what you're having and what's coming up to 48 hours from now so i'd look at the clouds and i knew today's weather tomorrow and the next day just by looking at the sky so that was really helpful because then we could plan where should we be turning because when we're heading to the azores we're actually too far south from the normal route because that's where the cloud said we should be and then later in the course, we went north to the normal way. And then at which point do you turn south to come back down to the Azores? Mm -hmm. So these were all things that the clouds were able to tell us. The thing about navigation um, that's a little more tricky nowadays than it was even five years ago is that the weather is changing. Um, yeah. The climate is changing. And so normal patterns that in the past have been incredibly predictable and that are in all of the books and everything that you research, yeah. they are Worthless. becoming less and less likely to be the case. Um, so we got caught in a lot of that. Herbie did insane amount of research in what we should expect to be the weather and the the patterns of the winds and and, and currents and everything and nothing was what it said it would be yeah. and that was true last year too um so it's becoming less and less predictable which means it's really important for you if you plan on doing a crossing to understand how to read weather patterns um because it's not going to be what people say it will be yeah because the arc actually went across at the standard time to go across and they got a lot of storms on them. Like, they were getting beat up like crazy. And they actually pay a weather routing guy to guide them a safe way. Yeah. And he couldn't even find a safe way. Like, the weather just wasn't right at that point. Because, actually, so this year what happened, the weather that normally happens in April didn't happen until the end of June. So, usually the weather changes and now you're good to go across the ocean. And that just didn't happen until late June. And it's predicted to be worse and worse every year. Yeah, um, so the pilot charts are... They were really good. Now they're just a general guide for... Yeah, uh, the pilot it's a charts... a suggestion now. I mean, you just yeah. you can't rely on them. You can't. It, it's a shame. Yeah. Um, so that was like a really big challenge for us because Herbie had really put so much effort into planning. And also when you talk about cruisers who have done this... Um, in the past, they've had that very predictable route, yeah. which we were expecting. And so we talk yeah. about our experience and they're like, what? Yeah, and <laughs> like, actually... It sounds like we did something very wrong, but in reality, the weather was just, it's changing. Um, uh, a year before we went, I actually planned like a, a test, like say we were out there and I pl like plotted out what our course would be, what the weather would be based on the forecast. And I was on land and I had access to all these forecasts and it was screwy then. Like it's just, it's been weird these yeah. past few years. Yeah. So really understand um, yeah, know the weather, weather patterns. That way you can keep yourself safe. Mm -hmm. At least one of you. So then the other one is storm avoidance. So being able to see the storms themselves, you're then able to steer around them. So a huge like, help to storm avoidance is actually your compass. It's the best tool to figure out which way the storm is going. So all you that we would do is we'd see the storm and then figure out what its bearing was on our compass because we're not really moving very fast and they are. So you see a storm and you're like, oh, that guy is due south. So it's 180 degrees. And then you check in an hour and it's now at 170 degrees. So you know now it's southeast. So we know that it's moving easterly and south of us. So just figuring out where they were, then we'd adjust our course to make sure that we never went in front of a storm and we never tried to outrun a storm. Because you watch old cartoons like with Bugs Bunny, the trees falling and they like run super far and then the tree smacks them go to the side tree misses you you're done <laughs> exactly like that that's it so we had a couple times where like storms would be coming along and they'd be we'd be watching them and then we'd just go around them and we were the storms that we got hit by 
we got we skirted the outsides of them because we wanted to get their push so that's the other huge advantage knowing how storms rotate and how they circulate i was able to put us in a position on the storms that we were able to use them to get more push and get more miles yes yeah that was really helpful our biggest our biggest suggestion is to study study do your research take a class um, be ready to read the weather that you're in and the weather to come when you're out there instead of relying on external sources to tell you what weather to expect uh, because you really can't trust them and uh, when it comes to big big things like hurricanes and where they are at that moment it's wonderful to have that communication yeah. with land people. <laughs> yeah, so hurricanes are all over the news. They're very popular and they sell well. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a hurricane, there is tons of coverage on where it is. So we had friends and family on shore that was texting me its position and its heading mm -hmm. and its speed. Keeping tabs on so, that hurricane so we never went near it. <laughs> yeah, so I was plotting it and then you know it's this direction. There's the waves from a hurricane coming from that direction. And then you see this nice little dome of a cloud. It's like, ah! Good. Hurricane. There it is. <laughs> it really made our journey safe and comfortable because Herbie really understood what he was looking at when he looked at the sky. And it's really all we can say on that. I mean, yeah, I, so we, important. We did it old school. Yeah. Uh, we had paper charts. We backed up everything with electronic, mm -hmm. but paper and physical was our primary. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, that sums up our video on weather routing and storm avoidance. We really hope it was helpful to you. Um, we can't say enough how important it was to us that Herbie have that knowledge before we left. And we highly recommend doing a lot of research before you leave. Yeah. So Know the weather. Know how to read the weather. Yes, exactly. Make sure that you are your own weatherman. If you do... Or weather woman. <laughs> If, thank you. If you do have questions about specific things, we'd love to answer them for you. It'll probably be Herbie. Yeah. <laughs> um, please ask them in the comment section. We will provide links for you for whenever we discussed um, more in depth weather patterns or um, cloud reading. And those written blogs that Herbie does can be really, really helpful. So thanks so much, guys, for watching and stay tuned for tomorrow's video. We're really excited for tomorrow's video because we're going to be talking about our equipment that we have on the boat, uh, specifically our monitor wind vane, electric motor, and we'll also talk about some failures that happened during the trip. So please tune in tomorrow and we look forward to seeing your beautiful faces.